Hey guys, this is Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by, appreciate it. So today I want to do a quick video about this little guy. This is the TID Radio H8. Uh, full disclosure, this was sent to me by the folks at TID Radio. They actually sent it to the Coffee and Ham Radio's channel, and I am going to do a quick review slash test on it. Not much review and more test. So this radio is a handheld. I think this sells for about $50. I'll have an affiliate link in the dingus below somewhere. A lot of channels, YouTube ham channels, have done reviews on this thing. So I'm, I don't really want to get into all the features of it. And it's, it's got some cool features. So what we want to look at is how clean this thing is. And one thing I saw... Uh, dealing with the radio, watching videos on this radio from the Smoking Ape and Temporarily Offline and a dozen other YouTubers, is that there are multiple versions of firmware on this. There's a GMRS version of this radio. There's a ham version of this radio. Not all firmware is created equal. So what I want to do was take a look at this thing. We'll put it on the spectrum analyzer and see what it looks like. So first things first, if we jump into the menu on this thing, menu and you can see that we have ham 230923 for our firmware version now the next thing i want to do is i want to change the power on this guy and let's start at low power and we're on vhf okay so i mentioned this a second ago and this is the web page from the government from the fcc this is the uh, ecfr.gov website and this is the electronic code of Fed federal regulations. And what we're specifically looking for here is Title 47, Part 97, Subpart D, 97.307. So there's a couple things that definitely it all relates to us as hams, but there's a couple specific things that they mention in here that has to do with this radio. And all of this relates to being a good operator. So part C, all spurious emissions from a station transmitter must be reduced to the greatest extent practicable. If any spurious emission, including chassis or power line radiation, causes harmful interference to the reception of another radio station, the licensee, you, of the interfering radio station, interfering amateur radio station, is required to take steps to eliminate the interference in accordance with good engineering practice. From a practical standpoint, you can't use that radio because unless you're an electronics engineer and you can go in and fix it yourself, you're kind of out of luck. I can't go in and change the filters on a radio. So besides part C, the other thing we want to look at is E here, specifically addresses VHF radio. It does not cover UHF, interestingly enough. The mean power of any spurious transmission from a station transmitter or external RF power amplifier on a frequency between 30 to 225 megahertz must be at least 60 dB below the mean power of the fundamental. For a transmitter having a mean power of 25 watts or less, your HT, the mean power of any spurious emission supplied to the antenna transmission line must not exceed 25 microwatts or minus 16 dBm and must be at least 40 dB below the mean power of the fundamental emission, but need not be reduced below the power of 10 microwatts. So the key here is on these HTs right there. When you take that in conjunction with be a good operator, and specifically what item C mentions here, it's your responsibility to eliminate the interference. That really means that you don't need to be running any of these HTs that don't meet the standard. And I, for one, am not going to. Now, this particular radio, you know, we'll see what it does. What we're looking for is our fundamental, obviously, which is going to be 146.52. And then we're going to look for our harmonics. And the harmonics need to be 40 dB below the fundamental and no greater than 16 dBm of transmit power, which translates to about 25 microwatts. So if we key up here, you'll see on the spectrum analyzer, over here on the left side is our fundamental right there. 
And then we have a couple of harmonics. Notice they're below the green line. That's our 16 dBm line. So on low power, this guy passes. And if you can look down here, you'll see that our fundamental is at 29.6 dBm. And then our second harmonic is minus 33 dBm. And our third harmonic is about 30, minus 31 or 32 dBm. So that looks pretty good. Let's jump to medium power on this thing. And let's key it up again and see what we get. All right. Once again, there's our fundamental. You can see our power went up. And here is our second and third harmonics right there. And they are still below 16 dBm and well below 40 dB below our fundamental frequency. So this is looking, it's looking pretty good, right? Let's go to high power. All right. We are now on high power. Let's see what we got. There we go. All right. There's our fundamental. There's our second harmonic. Woo, that is right on the edge of badness there. That's at minus 17 dBm. Our marker line is at minus 16. And this guy is minus 13. And you can see that he is over the limit. And that's going to be at 439.4 megahertz. So let's take a look at that close up. And this is just the second harmonic we're looking at now. And you can see that we are above the line. And there's some other stuff now since we're zoomed in so far that's the meters picking up as peaks. But all we're interested in here is this. And you can see that that guy is clearly above the green line. This radio is a fail. At low power, it seems to be fine. At low power, it does not fail the FCC regulations for something like this. And even at me medium power, it's good. Low power on this is about a watt. Medium power is about two watts. And high power is right around seven watts, give or take. And the purpose of this was not necessarily to test the power output of the radio. And then what I'm going to do here is we're going to change our units from dBm to watts. Boom. So now if you look at our table, this shows the output in watts down here. 7.3 watts for our fundamental, 18.7 microwatts for our second harmonic, and 41 microwatts for our third harmonic, which is again above 16 dBm or 25 microwatts, which is what this is since I changed to watts. So unfortunately, this radio is a fail. Possibly TID Radio will come out with new firmware and update this. This may be a software fix. They've made some progress on it, but I still can't call it a recommended buy at any price point because it's it violates the FCC rules on VHF transmissions. Guys, that's all I've got for you today. If you would give me a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to the channel, FEP Labs Radio. Make sure that you ring the bell in the dingus below because that will notify you whenever I post any new content. Y'all, thank you very much. 73, have a good one.